So we've installed this new plugin, and what this does is it gives us these features for shopping, e-shopping. But notice we've got several settings we've got to deal with first. All of this is behind the scenes stuff again that there's a variation of this on all the plugins, there's a variation of this on Amazon and any e-commerce solution settings. Usually we only have to set them up once and then they work. But um, let's continue to set these up. Uh, we looked at general and admin. For the moment we'll skip taxes and shipping and we did payments. Next let's look at checkout. Select that checkout tab. Force user registration, yes or no. Users can check out, or actually no or yes. Users can check out without an account, or users must check out with an account. So this is up to you to decide, but if we select the second option, the person has to create an account first to be able to buy anything. And that may be a slow or fast process. That may be an annoying or not annoying process. This gets us to then the concept of friction. Friction is any action that annoys the user. If the user is trying to buy something and stuff gets in the way, that's friction, and then that might cause them to abandon the process. So there's too many hoops for me to jump through. I'll cancel and go buy elsewhere. So if you leave the first one on, they can buy something without through the, going through the hassle of creating an account, and they can choose to create one later. That might be less friction and better for you because then they buy something faster. Uh, if you turn this one on, it says it will also activate the feature for people to be able to register for you. The old version of the plugin didn't do this, and you'd have to go to manually activate it. We'll leave it as the default here, but again, you decide what's best for your store. This one, I'm not sure why the default is this one, and I don't like it. When you're buying something, you usually enter a billing address and a shipping address. Sometimes you have the you have what you want to do is buy it with your credit card, but then ship it elsewhere. And this is saying users must re-enter shipping address. Okay, I'm not going to buy my product and ship it elsewhere. I'm going to buy my product from my address and ship it to my address. And if you leave this on, it will force the user to put in their address one more time. I think that's annoying. I think that's friction. So I would recommend turn on the first one. The person fills in the billing address first. And then they click a button and all that information automatically goes over to the shipping boxes. And it's done. If they would like to put a different billing and shipping, they can do so. But if it's going to be the same billing and same shipping, why would you make them do it twice and annoy them? So that's where reduction of friction. Security. Force users to use SSL encryption or allow site to be used insecurely and unencrypted. Well, that sounds scary. I better turn it on force SSL. No, unless you've bought the SSL security certificate. Unless you've gone over to Bluehost, GoDaddy, Host, Monster, whatever, and also bought security. Don't activate this because pe the site will then tr be trying to run via HTTPS and if you never bought security, it won't work. So yes, we'll have to leave it insecure. It says this can cause warnings for your users if you do not have a properly configured SSL. So leave the default alone unless you know you bought SSL. That's usually like an extra sixty to eighty dollars a year. And yes, when you sign up for the first time at GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc., they usually give you SSL for free for one year. And then after that you have to pay for it. And it won't even matter anyway, to some degree, because PayPal is going to process the credit cards, not you. So it's okay that your site doesn't have security for some of that, because PayPal will process it. Then there's all of these boxes that then you can customize and rearrange about what's going to display for users when they try to buy your your products it'll show a heading your billing and contact details and it'll ask for first name last name address all of this stuff notice then show the item yes or no display it yes or no make it mandatory yes or no 
Yes. Um, what if you're not shipping anything? That'll come up with uh, an item a little bit elsewhere uh, here. And so you then will say, well, you don't need any of this shipping stuff. You're not shipping anything. So you're going to turn off all of these right here to say, don't display them. You're not shipping anything. I noticed state is not mandatory. You might want to turn that on, or else a person can fill this out and not put a state, and it'll accept it, and then you won't know where to ship it to. So whatever you think of these that are mandatory. And this calls it postal code. Usually we call it zip code. I think most people probably know what postal code is versus zip code, but if you just want to put zip code, you can also change that. This is asking for a phone number and an email. Maybe we don't really want to ask for their phone number. So you can then click the display to know and the mandatory to know. And that way when they want to buy something, we'll not ask for a phone number. This is up to you. I'm just giving examples. Let's say I also want to ask for people's Twitter address. So if I wanted to add a new field on the right side, you have a column here, plus and minus. So after email, if I click the plus, you add in a new field, Twitter address, or Twitter username, whatever, and we're asking, will they input one line of text. Will you give them a text area, which is like a paragraph, a spot of a paragraph for them to write something? Heading, which is to divide up everything. You've got the section of billing address, the section of shipping address. You can make a new section if you'd like as a heading. Do you want to make something selectable? You have like seven things to select. You can have the question, where did you hear about us? And then have seven selectable items or something. You can edit all of them there radio buttons, check boxes, etc. We're just asking for a Twitter address or their Twitter name. Maybe we'll put that Twitter username. Display it, but maybe not mandatory. Not everyone has Twitter. We don't want to get them stuck by, by them saying, well, I don't have a Twitter and I can't, it doesn't let me proceed until I put one. So that one's optional for us. If you no longer want that Twitter box, you can click the minus sign. But notice most of them do not have a minus because these are the defaults and you can't delete the defaults. You can't delete them, but you could hide them if you don't want them to be used. So you can set this up however you want and then rearrange it. Maybe last name first. See if you grab the edges over here, you can click and drag to rearrange. Any changes you want to make here is fine. Remember at the bottom to click Save. And what I also see here is select a form set. You can create a brand new form set, um, a different set of information that will be need, that need to be filled in if you set it up that certain products require certain fields and other products require other fields, you can create a whole new form set and manage more for the user to input. I'm not going to do a, a new form set. This default should be fine. Any questions on this screen? The checkout form. Make sure you save that at the bottom, and then we'll go on to marketing. Users who bought this also bought. This will add, um, if, if a person, we're going to see the whole shopping cart as thumbnail previews. And then if a person chooses to click on a product like read more, they will see that one single product. That's default. If you then activate this, as they're looking at one particular item, your theme at the bottom usually will tell them, people who bought this also bought that. So that's known as cross-selling. We have a term here. Cross-selling. 
up the selling. The cross selling is recommend to user buy more. Usually of the same value or type of product. In my case, Victor's Bakery, I'm gonna sell packages of like mini donuts, one dozen mini donuts. And then it'll say, people who bought that also bought this. One package of 12 regular sized donuts, or one package of 12 cupcakes. So something related is going to be cross-sold. It's about the same sort of type of product or the same value. Upselling then, recommend to user buy a more expensive version. Let's say the, the user is about to buy a 12-inch or a 10-inch pie, a 10-inch uh, pecan pie. They're about to buy it. It's in the it's in the screen, and it says, "Why not instead buy the 12-inch one for like two dollars more?" They were going to spend ten dollars. Now they're going to spend twelve dollars. That's upselling. You're trying to convince them to buy a level higher. Um, the this cart, however, notice doesn't have up sales, it just has cross sales. It doesn't list it that way, but that's a cross sell, cross sale. Have people know about other products related? I would say this one's useful. I would say yes. That's letting people buy more of a particular product. Yes? So if you check that box, is there something in the background that it go out and check if they have that product on here? Yes, your so system. Yes, this, sure this system, yeah, all of that is tracked in the database to see what's available, what's related, and, and so forth. It's all pretty automatic. Share this and then Facebook like. These are very useful in that you can get free advertising from people. You're selling this, uh, you know, 12 donuts, and someone. Um, and someone is uh, really, really liking one of your products, you can turn them into cheerleaders for you by then giving them a way for them to tweet about it or to post it on Facebook and such. That's useful, but the one that comes with, with WordPress itself, uh, part of Jetpack, I like it better. I think this one's a little basic, as well as this like button. So these two are useful, but I don't like these versions that come with this plugin. I would use the Jetpack version. So I'll say here, add social sharing by a Jetpack instead of WP eCommerce. We'll see how to do that later. And so I want that. I want the ability for people to tweet this product to tell more people about it. I like this one, how, to, how customers found us. Activate that one. And you'll get just a very simple drop-down. This is not editable, but you'll get a simple drop-down that has options like, you know, word of mouth, radio, internet, etc. That way you can build uh, data to see what's being effective in your terms of, of marketing. Product RSS, don't worry about that. Google search, don't worry about that. And this whole Google Analytics, don't worry about all of that. If you've taken my SEO class, and there we've talked about Google Analytics, if you've learned that, then you might want to use this. But the, the point of this is for Google Analytics to fully track your customers' um, you know, efficiency on your site. Uh, Google Analytics can track how long did people stay on your site, what pages did they click, all of that stuff. We don't talk about it in this class, it's out of our scope, so don't worry about this whole section. But if you took my SEO class, this section should make sense. I'm going to click Save Changes. That's the marketing screen. 
let's look at import. There are many ways to build an e-commerce site. We've mentioned WP Commerce, WooCommerce, Shopify, etc. Each system believes theirs is the best. Each system has a way to track inventory, and each system is a little bit different from each other internally. And so in my experience, in my company, we've had to deal with migrating one client from one system to another. And honestly, it's always been a little tricky. It's always been a little annoying because each company, each plugin believes theirs is the best way. And they're all right and they're all wrong. If the plugin does what you need it to do, they're, they're right. Five stars. If the plugin doesn't do exactly what you need to do, well, you might not give it five stars. So, what this screen is about is if you've got a shopping cart in any other plugin, here's how you in, import that. Uh, product information into here. And it's a little technical, we don't really need to deal with it, I don't think most of us are, in, are on this boat, but this is that you need to upload a CSV file, an Excel file, a spreadsheet. You need to upload a spreadsheet with all your products, and the spreadsheet has to be set up in a specific way. It has to have these columns in this order a product name, column, description, additional description, price, etc. And so the example would be, well, I'm uploading a spreadsheet and the first product is banana. The yellow fruit contains potassium, 67 cents. Skew of banana, 150 grams. Zero over here is the uh, stock quantity. If you put zero, that means you don't, you, you don't you're not running out of product, um, and then no limit. Here's another one. Apple red. Red round, juicy. Isn't an orange, and it's linked, and it's got a link, etc. So all of these fields that define a product. Columns. There's a column for the weight plus the units. How many on stock? Do you have a limit? 10. When we run out of those, they're gone. If I were to use WooCommerce, but then I said, well, I don't quite like how it works. I want to bring it into WP Commerce. There is a way to do this import. But honestly, it's always difficult. It's always tricky and annoying. It never quite works out perfectly to go from one to the other. So really, it's the better idea to start with one and stick with it. And that's why working on a test environment like this, you can test that out to see what you like. And you could install two plugins, the WP Commerce one and the WooCommerce one. I would only have one active at a time, however, and then decide what you like. You can have more than one ecom plugin installed, but should only have one active. They're both trying to do the same thing. They're both trying to have you sell products and have inventory. So if you got two at once, that could cause conflicts. Figure out which works best for you and stick with it. Importing, exporting is challenging. So again, I've had to deal with this a few times in, in my company. We had to uh, you know, export the products and import them and make sure that the columns lined up perfectly. And if there was an empty column, it might have affected the import and it took a little bit of effort. There's not much to do here, that's just the explanation of what this is. Let's go look at presentation.
Under presentation, we have various visual aspects that we need to set up for our shop. Button style, do you want it to say add to cart or buy now? If you simply want people to go right away to buy it, there's buy now. Most likely you'll want people to add one item to the cart and more items, so add to cart. If you're advanced, you can, you can program the add to cart in a more advanced way. I'm going to assume we're not advanced, then that's okay, so we will not hide the cart, but no means yes, show the add to cart. If you say yes, that means yes, hide the cart. So then no one will be able to buy anything unless you had programmed it in an advanced way. Leave it as no. Would you like people to rate the product from one to five stars? Again, that's up to you, yes or no. Are you going to show how much is, a, is available of a particular product? It's up to you. Maybe I'm selling an unlimited amount of pecan pies. I can always bake another one. So it doesn't matter to show I've got 99 of them. But if you're selling a one-off product, maybe you want to show that. If you're sh selling you know, 10 and then that's it and it's gone, maybe you want to show that. How many do I have to sell? I would recommend to turn on yes, the display fancy purchase notification. This will give you a little pop-up that happens that as soon as a person adds a product to the cart, it'll pop up. Continue shopping or check out now. Uh, leave shipping as is, that's fine. Disable link and title, that's fine. That'll allow people to see a larger version of your product. Add quantity, yes or no, that's up to you. Will you let people buy three pies at once? Or only one at a time. If you only want one product at a time, you put no. If you want, if you want them to buy more than one at once, you can click yes. How you actually display your basic shopping cart screen? We only can use default, which is going to be a list of your products with a nice picture and description. If I wanted them, well, not a list, but the default view. If we wanted a different view, which is the list view or a grid view, we have to go over to the gold cart option to give you more features. The default one is fine, but if we want more design for our shopping cart, we have to go buy an upgrade. If we select grid view, if we bought it, we'd be able to select different options here. If I use categories for our products, and we should, do I want to display those categories as a list on screen? That's up to you. I'll show you different ways how this can be done. Don't worry about select what to display. We'll leave it as all products, and then we can fine-tune it once we've got products. Sort product by... This is up to you. Would you like to have all your products listed alphabetically, in order of price, the time you uploaded, or drag and drop? Ascending from A to Z, or descending from Z to A. Breadcrumbs is a way for more of a menu to be visible at the top of the screen. That is, if I go to Pecan Pies, at the top of the screen it'll show me, well, Pecan Pies is inside of the Pies section, inside of the store. What if you're selling, uh, you know, half a dozen uh, cookies? At the top, it'll show half dozen, inside of cookies, inside of the shop. So more of a path about how you got to that product. And that's optional. The reason for this is because then you could have an active link for people to automatically to quickly go back to all of your cookies. I forget what this one does, product group, product display. I have to check it later. I guess one product per page. If I do sliding product, I'll only display one product per page, I guess. Default is fine. If you built subcategories, do you want to show them? We're probably not going to deal with subcategories, so we'll leave it alone. Don't worry about replace title with product category. That one's not, a, not very useful. Don't worry about it. Featured products, this is up to you to decide. If you select it to show all your products alphabetically, then they'll be shown alphabetically. But what if there's a particular product 
that you also that you always want to display uh, first. Let's say I want to sell truffles. T. Well, you've got a lot of products before A to T. If you sell, if you mark your product as featured, we'll see how later, and then activate this, truffles will be first always because it'll be featured. It'll take over alphabetically. It'll be first. You can mark more than one product as featured, and then they will be alphabetical also. So whatever makes sense to you here. Shopping cart, where would you like to display the cart? We'll leave it alone as a widget. Would you like whatever text, whatever prices appear to then also say display plus pushes and tax? Uh, that's up to you. doesn't matter which you choose. If you write product descriptions, would you like those to be shown, yes or no? If you're using thumbnails in your products, that is in your, in your product categories, do you want those displayed? If you have seven items in a category, do you want that displayed? If you've got zero products in a category, do you want that displayed, yes or no? Use a grid view, yes or no? The default here is all your product thumbnails will be a square of 148 pixels, as well as your categories and an individual product. That's, these are related to cropping. Choosing yes means that the thumbnails are cropped to exact dimensions. Normally, thumbnails are proportional. So notice all of these dimensions are square. And if you try to upload a rectangular sized product, what it'll do is it'll grow it or shrink it to fit into a square. It might look distorted. So if you select crop, if you've got a rectangle, it'll cut out the edges so that it's a square. That might cut out important parts of your picture. So none of these is a one-size-fits-all. What you need to do is you need to decide what size of thumbnails to display, and that's also going to display depend on your theme. But if you know all your rectangular pictures, you know, you could put them as width of 300, height of 200, and a single image will be 500 by 300 or something. rectangles. So if you've got a square picture, it'll force it to a rectangle. If you've got a square picture and you do crop here, it might crop it weird also. So always know what dimensions you have here and upload your pictures in those proportions or dimensions. Show thumbnails, yes, that's obvious. Show a little picture of what they're about to buy. Do you want to allow people that when you click the small picture, show a big picture? That's the light box. I'll say yes. It'll automatically show the larger version no matter... If I uploaded a 1,000 sized picture, it's going to show one 500 pixels. But if I leave light box on, it'll then allow people to see the larger version. And would you like to see it as the color box or the thick box? It's just a different design. I kind of like the color box a little better. Pagination. I recommend you put put it to yes, and we'll say five, and then both. What's happening here is if you don't put pagination, all your products will be shown from top to bottom in in the page with no end. You'll have to scroll and scroll and scroll to find the next uh, the next screen, and so. Instead, of, I'll say it'll show five at a time, and then it'll say next screen. And the next or previous screen will be shown both at the bottom and the top of the page. Don't worry about intense debate. This is about people commenting on your products. You need some sort of setup. I haven't really used it much. I can't say too much about it. 
it will click Save Changes. And besides, def uh, WordPress has a default way for people to comment on your products if you want, over on, uh, on Discussion. Let's save, save this on anything we kind of skipped, don't worry about it, but any questions on any of these items? Yes? Are there any uh, uh, problems when you up to one of these plugins? I mean, do they do the plugins only accept a certain set of processors and not others? It's going to depend on the plugin, but this plugin by default accepts um, PayPal. And if you go look over on the products extensions, there are other payment processors. So hopefully the one that you have is listed somewhere there, and then you'll have to install that sub plugin, and then that will interface with your credit card processor, your merchant, you know, your merchant gateway. Exactly. The last thing that we'll look on this screen. Uh, if you look at presentation here, advanced theme settings, it says uh, WP Commerce provides you the ability to move your theme files to a safe place for theming control. If you want to change the look of your site, select the files you want to edit from the list and click Move. What this is saying then is right now, These are the pieces that make up the design of your cart. For example, cart widget. The default colors and fonts and all of that, the CSS is found here. How does the transactions screen look like to people? All of that's here and all of, it all of this is editable. The way it's editable, however, is inside of the appearance editor screen. And we've mentioned before that under this screen you have the full power to pull back the curtain and edit all of the code that WordPress is made of. There's no fancy buttons where you can change the color right here. Main navigation primary menu. This has got a border one pixel solid gray. If I know a little bit of HTML and I change that, then what's happening here is I'm making this border uh, 15 pixel, 51 pixels dashed. So I'm making a dashed line here, red, thick, if I know what I'm doing with HTML. And so what, what it's saying here is, if you'd like to make any changes to these shopping cart settings, you need to select what you need, what you want to edit and move them, so don't do this yet. But if you select anything to move, then now when you're on the editor over here, you will have WP Commerce pages that you can edit. Again, that's going to be via code. And if you don't know what this code means, don't try to change it or it'll really mess up the site. Like I see a spot right here. This is where the person puts their username and password. If I wanted to automatically say something like placeholder your password. Again, don't do this, don't worry about it. But the point of this is if I want to do any further customization, I have to select these items and move them so that they can be edited. If I want to make changes, but first I want to make a backup, I can do that, and that will make a backup of all my files. Because this screen, this editor, is very powerful, but I feel it's one of the forgotten screens in WordPress. Even on WordPress 4.5, there's really nothing here about an undo. There's nothing here about preview your changes. You make a change, you make a mistake or a misspelling, you click save and that's it. Unless you know what mistake you made, your site could be broken. This screen really needs a revamp because it's very powerful.
All right, so we've looked at all of these items. We still need taxes and shipping. Any, uh, any questions on any of these that we've looked at? Okay, let's talk about these that are always annoying to talk about, but very important. Let's go look at taxes. At the moment, it says turn tax off. This is the part, really, that I can't really tell you what to do here. I can explain what these mean, I can give you examples of how I've worked this with clients, but you have to decide what to do. You have to talk to your tax pro, you have to talk to someone that you know that knows about taxes, you have to go educate yourself over at the Chamber of Commerce, you have to go take a class on finances or something. I can't really tell you what you need to do. Because taxes and shipping, it's up to you. You can run this completely without any tax, that's the easiest way. It might not be the best way, however, because if you're making money off of this, that's income. And there's a very low threshold about how much money you make before you have to report it. It's very low. I think it's like $1,000, maybe even lower. So people get surprised when they find out in tax time, oh, my kid that got you know, um, birthday presents from all the grandparents, and he got you know $1,200 of, of money, that was income to your child. Technically, your child should pay taxes on that, even though that sounds shocking. But taxes are um, a complicated thing, and so if you don't collect taxes, you have to deal with it at one point, and it might not be nice to deal with. So let's say we're going to say, yes, we'll collect taxes to see how this works, turn it on, and then at the bottom click Save. Before we make any changes, turn that on and click Save at the bottom. Product prices. It's saying, on your products, are your prices tax exclusive or inclusive? Meaning, I'm selling this for five dollars plus tax. So whatever tax works out to be, they're actually buying it for six dollars and twenty-three cents. That's what tax exclusive is. Whatever the base price, then tax will be added to it. If you do tax inclusive, if you're selling it for six dollars then whatever the base price was plus whatever tax means it's six dollars. So you have to decide what here, but usually tax exclusive. Specific tax. Do you want it to be more of a universal um, system or each individual product has different tax rate. Each individual product would be the first one, which is a lot of work. Or have all of them be the same tax. Most likely that's what you want. The logic of it, the default is apply tax when billing region is the same as tax rate. So when we make our tax rates, we're going to say, okay, the region of California gets this tax rate, and the region of Colorado gets that tax rate. Apply that billing, I mean, that tax, if the billing is the same as the tax rate. So if they are being billed in California, they are going to be charged California tax. If they are being, uh, if they're shopping from New York, but I'm billing them in California, I will not charge California tax. And this is really confusing and messy, because every state, every jurisdiction, really, has their own setup on taxes. Some states will only collect tax if whatever is being bought is in their state. If John is in Delaware and buying a product in Delaware, he gets charged. If John is in Delaware but buying a product in California, he doesn't get charged. Delaware made that law. Some states, um, like California though, charge you either or. If you're in California and you're buying something in Colorado, you're going to get charged Colorado tax uh, in, in California. So it's complicated. Apply it when the shipping is the same as the tax, when the billing. Apply tax when the billing and the shipping is the same. Apply tax to the billing or the shipping address. This can be complicated. The default is usually fine. We're going to assume that if they're buying in California, they're going to get charged California tax rate. If they're in New York, they're not going to get charged California tax rate because they're not in California. You're not in California charging them. 
It's more about where are you at. So this can be complicated, but we'll leave the default. And then so here we've got tax rates and tax <coughs> bans. We can add different taxes for different countries all over the world, but we said we're just going to focus on Canada, Mexico, U.S. So I'm going to jump down to U.S. just for the moment, so like U.S., and I have here California, and I'm going to say this applies 8% California, and again, more confusion here, because m many parts of San Diego are 8%, and I'm pretty sure at the moment, National City, a little bit down south, is 9%. So for some, you're going to be undercharging, and for some, you're going to be overcharging. So this can be <coughs> very messy. Question? You need to first click the check mark up here to turn it on, and then you need to save, and then it should come up. So I can add more of these if I want. I can then set different states and such. There's no quick, universal way to do this, unfortunately. This is always annoying. This is always detailed. We have tax bans, or special tax rules, you create and apply on a per-product basis. So I can apply certain um, tax rates to certain products under certain conditions. I wouldn't worry too much about this one, but notice also it says tax bans do not take effect when products are tax exclusive. These are tax inclusive. You have selling certain products to certain locations the tax will will come along with that product. You have to decide if that will work for you. Probably for most people, no. You have to set some sort of tax rate and save it. If you don't want to deal with any taxes at all, then don't activate that tax up here. Then you have to deal with it elsewhere. Meaning when it comes time, you know, tax time. So make sure you save. Any other questions here? Again, I can't tell you exactly what to do, but these are various ideas. Any questions on taxes before we go to shipping? Okay, let's look at shipping, which is another item that could be complicated. Shipping, of course, only applies if you're actually sending a real product. If you're not doing that, if you're doing a digital product, then turn that off. You're not going to ship an actual MP3 through the mail. So we're going to assume we are. We're shipping real products, cupcakes and so forth. So I'll leave that on. What's my shipping origin city, which helps fill out the uh, shipping, because most likely you are going to be selling a product from your from your house or your garage or your factory or whatever. So where is it coming from? I'm going to put San Diego. What's the zip code? I believe it's 91921. Something like that. Whatever the zip code of San Diego is. If you have ship wire, which is something outside of the scope, what we can talk about. This is a fulfillment warehouse system. You put your products in their warehouse and they can ship it out to other parts of the country faster. It's not free, of course. You have to pay for the warehouse space. So I won't deal with that. Are we also going to have the ability to do free shipping? That's something for you to decide, yes or no. If you do yes, well, after a certain price, let's say $25 worth of, mer worth of merchandise, free shipping, sure. Let's 
save that. Oh, okay, here's a kind of a little bug. Uh, I clicked save and then it said it disabled and it said because we have not further created these systems down here or selected them. So we're gonna remember to set these options here and then we need to turn it back on. Okay, so do we want people to select flat rate, table rate, weight rate? And the way this works is, for example, if I say yes, I want to do flat rate settings in the continental US, it's going to be one flat rate, whatever they buy, it's going to, we're going to tack on an extra three dollars of shipping. If they're there, if they're, then they are outside of the 48 states, so that'll be, I don't know, five dollars. If we're shipping anywhere in North America, Canada, Mexico, Belize, etc., well, that'll be an extra seven dollars, South America, ten dollars, whatever. I'm just putting some values here. We're not even shipping to these other places anyway, so maybe we put nothing. But a flat rate, that's one possible way that the user can select. Flat rate. For for some this will be maybe too expensive, for some this will be too cheap. Maybe for you it's losing you money. Maybe you do really want to ship something to Hawaii, you get to the post office and they say that'll be twelve dollars please and all you did was you charge them five. So you're losing some money on your product. That's why we then have table rates and weight rate. If we look at table rate This is based on price. If I'm saying something over five dollars is going to cost three dollars to ship, I'll add another one. Anything over fifteen dollars then is going to cost seven dollars to ship. I'm just making up some values here. I don't know if these make sense for the product. Twenty-five dollars, it'll be ten dollars. So anything under five dollars, that would then mean has no shipping cost in my current setup. Lastly, we have weight rate. This might be the one that makes the most sense, but it also might be difficult to set up because this is listed in pounds, pounds and above. If I'm selling something that's three pounds and up, this is how much I'm going to charge them. You can go on and on and say, well, then anything up to 10 pounds is another $10 whatever makes sense for your particular product. The easiest way of all might be flat rate, but then you might overcharge some people and you might undercharge other people. So those are the shipping modules. And the last item here, we have external shipping calculators. If you're going to be using USPS, the United States Postal Service, you can set this up here. And if you've created an account, you can set all of this up and then let people give them the ability for them to select first class, priority, express, all of that. That might be another way to go. Don't use any of this. These modules let the post office deal with it.
or UPS. So USPS is the post office, the, the plain old post office. And UPS is the is the company in our United Parcel Service. And here then again, you can also set this up and all of this set up. You need to go create an account and everything. So if you are shipping a real product, you have the option to uh, go drop off the products at the post office. And you can even have your letter carrier pick it up when they drop off your letters. And if you go over to USPS.com or UPS.com, you can set up an account there and get discounts. And you can request pickups. You never have to go to the post office to mail the products. Um, so that's up to you to decide what works. But again, all of this all of this could be a lot of setup, but it's important to, to do it and it can be changed. Any changes you make, remember to save. So any questions on any of these items? Okay, we're going to add a, a product very soon. <coughs> we're going to add a product very soon, but if we added a product and then we went to visit site, we would not see it because the whole shopping cart system is hidden. It's not part of a menu yet. So let's do this before we add a product. Let's go over to appearance menus. Let's go to Appearance Menus, and then you will see there's a, this is our current menu, Home, Contact Us, eBay, Blog, etc. And on the left side we have Products Page, Your Account Transactions, Checkout. I want to add all of those new pages, select all those new pages, and then add them to the menu. They get added, but the problem is that it added all of them as individual items. I want that these are sub menu items. Products page, <coughs> etc. You can rearrange them how you want, of course. Actually, I don't like that it says products page. I'm not selling products really, I'm selling cakes and pies and all that good stuff. Products makes it sound so sterile. So remember what you can do is you can open up one of these menu items and instead of calling it products you can call it uh, shop or the shop or the bakery bakery store or store anything you want and that's what will appear on screen on the menu save the menu and then visit site Once you save that and visit site, you should see up on your menu at the top right, Home, Contact Us, Blog, Bakery Store. If you click on Bakery Store, Products page, there's no products yet. If you look at your account, well, there's no purchase history, this user has not logged in, there's no products, transaction results, nothing has been transacted, so nothing shows up. Check out, there's nothing to, there's nothing in the cart. So we can't check out. We'll do one more thing, then we'll add a product. Go back to the dashboard. Go back to Appearance Widgets. This one's optional, but notice because we've added this new plugin, we have some new widgets. WP e-commerce, latest products, price range, product category, product donations, 
product specials, product tag, and shopping cart. We have these new widgets that we can add to various parts of our design. I'm going to say that on the content bottom one, I'm going to drag the shopping cart widget into it. So now I will, the user will always see the shopping cart at the bottom of the screen. They will always see whatever they bought visible there. The default is not that. The default is that if they want to see what's in my shopping cart again, they have to go to the shopping cart screen. But if you add a widget, shopping cart widget, to one of these sidebars, they'll always see it. Once you add it, visit site, on the corner, shopping cart is empty. So that was just dragging the widget under the appearance and widgets, dragging the shopping cart widget in the right spot. You can play with these other types of widgets to display other things. Okay, let's add a product, and then we will see how that works. If you hover over products, well, actually, before products, if you go to hover over products, we will see tags and categories. Let's go to categories first, actually. The default is that all of our products are under the basic product category category. This is like if you were writing blog posts. The default category of posts is uncategorized, not useful at all. If we're writing articles in the blog, we should categorize them so that people can find them, so that the search engines can find your blog posts. With products, we should do the same. We should uh, create organization for them. So here, under Products, we'll type Cookies. All products that are going to be a cookie will be under this category. So I can display all cookie products easily, so people can find cookie products easily. Is yes. this a service? Is this one identify, or does this It might not apply. Uh, let's say I am a public speaker. That's a service. I might have public speaking for corporations, public speaking for private parties, private speaking, public speaking for um, <coughs> schools. So that could be a way to organize. Don't worry about slug, it'll automatically fill itself in, which is just simply lowercase version of what you typed here. And this could be called tasty cookies, doesn't matter, but cookies is the category. All the cookies that I create will be in this category. Parent. If I am creating parent category of cookies, then I can have subcategories of sugar-free cookies, and I can have cookies that actually taste good. <laughs> so then I can further sub-organize that way if I'd like. We're not going to really deal with child and parent categories. That might be too complex. That's up to you. And a description might not be prominent by default. depends on the theme. But just to see, perhaps our particular theme does show it, so I will say uh, buy batches of our cookies made by hand. advanced store settings. If you want to override any of the things we did over to the settings screen, you could do that here. We won't, but this is the spot for you 
to change all of that if you'd like. Uh, at the very bottom, select Add New Product Category. And now at the top, we've got Cookies. I'm also going to do Cakes and Pies. If you'd like to do any more, you can. But I'm going to add Cakes. Notice I've also got a spot for an image. If you want to add an image, you could. cookies, cakes, and pies. For the moment, those are the three different kinds of products I'm selling. I could easily sell many other kinds of products. If you made a mistake, you can make changes over here by hovering over the one you made a mistake on and clicking Edit. That'll take you back to Edit that Item, Description, etc. Product tags are very similar, but usually you're going to work with categories. This is another way to organize. The way that this is a little confusing, I believe, is just like posts, where you can have post tags and post categories. And the way that I differentiate them is that a category is like the big organizational unit, cakes, cookies, pies. A smaller organization then is tags. I could have a tag of chocolate. which means that I could have a chocolate cake, a chocolate meringue pie, a chocolate chip cookie. Clearly those three are different categories, cakes, pies, cookies, but all three of them share the tag of chocolate. And that's just to further organize, because later on I could set it up to show all chocolate products, no matter what category they are. And yes, I can add a product to more than one category, but it might be easier to add a, a tag to more than one product. And that way they can be found a lot easier. So I can do chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, whatever. I'm just going to add chocolate for the moment. And then we'll take a break, actually. Right after the break, then we will add a product, because that entails a lot of setup. But at this point, we finish looking at the settings. And then we've also dealt a little with categories and tags. We'll take a break. It's 8.40. We'll come back at 8.50, and then uh, we will actually add a product.